evening everybody and how are we all doing today this is another sunday night live stream on the 18th of june 2023 hope you're all well hope you're having a great weekend whatever you've been up to i have had a great week to say the least we've we've been to gardeners world live i saw some of you there we've done a bit of gardening as well most important lots of things that have been happening lots of things to talk about and especially at the moment, right now, it is raining, which brings us up to what we're going to be talking about today, rainwater harvesting and efficient watering. We've been lucky. We've been lucky with this little rainfall. But we'll get into that in just a moment. First of all, let's see if anybody is out there. Straight away, Bally Cillian is out there saying good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Adrian is also out there saying hello to me. Hello to you. Uh, Philly SPB is out there. Hello to you. Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Uh, Onka was out there saying what about everyone and my friend Stuart Jackson over on the other outlet. Hope you had a good week, mate, and I hope you've had a good week of selling. Let's find out if he's here. Turbo Stream is out there. Good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson, he's on YouTube. Evening, Richard and Veg Army, my friend Oracle. Excellent. Uh, Gary Filler, hi all. Good evening to you. Uh, what else have we got? Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening all. Still waiting for rain here. So hot today. We got rain. We got rain at long last. Uh, good evening, gardeners from Anna Jones. Good evening to you, Alison O'Brien. Evening all. Have had lots of rain here in East Grinstead. Feeling much cooler. Excellent. Um, Richard Golden. Hello all. Good evening to you. Digwell is saying nearly late for muster. Indeed. Uh, but you made it just in time, so you will not get a ticking down for that. Uh, Bally Soon is saying there's a couple of showers in Belfast, but nowhere near enough. And Adrian is saying not raining in East Anglia. Um, Turbo Stream, we had a little rain earlier on, but nowhere near enough to do anything for the garden. Uh, Rebecca is over on the Facebook group. Hel good evening. Hope you're well. Lovely to see you. Uh, and Amanda is also on the Facebook group, group saying lots of rain overnight in Leeds. So... Kind of very, very topical. Stuart Jackson is saying we had rain last Sunday, but we've only had a few drops today. And Graham Arnold, evening everyone, no rain in Cambridgeshire. So, yeah, rain seems to be a very topical subject at the moment. You know, we have not here in West Sussex, Little Hampton on the coast here, I cannot remember the last time we had rain. It has been weeks. And I'm pretty good. I have... 14 water butts in my garden now 15 but i only arrived last week but i have 14 water butts in my garden and i have been through pretty much six of those water butts in fact more than that nine of those water butts were nearly empty so i've gone through quite a bit of water in this time so it for me it was getting very very desperate i try and collect as much rainwater as possible Last week, we had a very, very light shower, which made absolutely no difference. But overnight and during the course of today, we've actually received nearly one centimetre of rain, according to my weather station. Now, one centimetre may not sound like a lot, but all that rain, that one centimetre of rain is landing on my shed roofs so and my house roofs. And it's all going down the gutters, down the drain pipes, straight into my water butts. And when I've checked on my water butts, it looks like we are collecting a good amount of, of rainwater in there, which hopefully will last us that little bit longer and just make things a little bit easier. Best thing is, of course, today I then don't need to water my garden. So it saved me on that. So what I want to find out from you guys is, do you do any form of rainwater harvesting? Do you capture rainwater in anything? We'll, we'll get started with that. Let's go to the comments quickly and see what's going on out there. Uh, Digwell says, we have had enough rain for the plots, but not enough for raised beds or containers. Yes, um, I can understand completely how that is a bit of a problem. You know, you need a good amount of rain. Uh, somebody in the Facebook group, could be Ian, is saying, hail here now in Malaga. Um, 
could be Ian. Let me know who you are at the end of a comment. I'm, I'm guessing that's, that's Ian in Malaga, but hail. I mean, I've got to admit, I would like a bit of hail. Uh, Kate is saying it's just started raining hard here in Nottingham. Uh, yep. And Stuart, my buckets have been out a week. I couldn't fill an, up an egg cup this week. Please send it this way. It's it's hopefully coming the, your way. Uh, Ernie, good evening, Richard and viewers. My lawn is near on straw colour. Another week with no rain and it all will be somewhere where the soakway is, is always green. Yeah. Uh, Bill and Vale's allotment is saying, even in all, at last, some rain for us. Absolutely. We've had one centimetre of rain in the last 24 hours, so it's good. Uh, Nicola saying, evening, Richard, and all, sorry I'm late. So there we go. That's catching up with the comments. And as you can see, a lot of people are starting to get rain. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of capturing as much rainwater as we possibly can. Every single downpipe, every single uh, shed has got gutters and water butts attached that they can physically go into. And the house, particularly, the house captures so much rainwater in a very small shower like this, my rainwater butt will be pretty much full up after this little rain shower. However, the ones attached to my shed, the shed roofs being that little bit smaller, don't quite capture as much rainwater, but they still worth doing. The bigger the, bigger the roof, the more rainwater it's going to catch. And the more, the bigger butts, the more butts we have, the best it's going to be, the more rainwater we can hold on to. At the moment, we're looking at the cost of living crisis. Price of water is something that does factor into it. And I capture so much rainwater our bills are pretty low for water. So for me, I cannot stress it enough, capture as much rainwater as possible. Uh, so Ian Beddows, it, it was Ian Beddows, it's saying, it was me in Malaga about hail, now 27 and sunny 30 minutes later. Love that sort of changeable weather. I haven't seen the last time we had it, but I do love that weather. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I have two 220-litre water butts and one blue barrel unknown capacity on my plot connected to my shed roof, plus a water bath very close to my plot. Now, this is a, a, a good point because I've spoken about I have now 15 water butts here at home. But on the allotment, we are only allowed, and it's a stupid rule, but we are only allowed two water butts per plot. Luckily, because I have two half plots, I can have four water butts on them. But I think it is a stupid wall. We should be able to collect as much rainwater as possible. However, on our site, we do have plunge tanks that we can use for watering our plots. So it's not like we're going to go without water. But I still think having just two water butts is a silly rule. I'd like to see much, much more. Uh, Ian says, been told we might have killed the lemon tree by locals as we have cut back at the wrong time of year. Don't know much about that, Ian, actually, but I've, I've seen the picture. So um, I'm going to go and speak to a citrus company at some point and I will find out more about it. But they, if locals say it, you could be right, but give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. See what happens. Uh, Stuart says, I have three water butts at the moment, but I will pot out around 50 buckets when we know it's going to rain. That's a good tip, actually. Uh, Stuart does something that I, I also do. When we know it's going to rain, we pop buckets out to try and capture as much more rainwater as possible. That way we can just increase the load. The other thing I like to do if we know it's going to get going to rain, is I like to fill up my watering cans with water from the water butts attached to downpipes in order to free up a bit more space in those water butts. Now, when several of my water butts aren't actually attached to any of my downpipes or in a chain to try and capture as much. That's due to location. Sometimes you can only have so many water butts in one area. So I have some more scattered around the, uh, the garden. So what I have to do with those is just pump water from the water butts on the downpipe over to these other water butts just to maximize the amount of growing that we have the amount of water space that we have sorry um but again potting buckets out capture as much rainwater as possible as Stuart jackson says last week we collected over 150 liters just by potting out the buckets so there you go it is worth doing 
Tell me stream says no butts at home, but I don't grow much veg at home. See, I've got a little thing that I feel when it comes to having water butts at home. It's not just for watering our vegetables. I have a water butt out the front, which I do use to water my front garden, but I also use it to wash the car. And it, it just makes it a bit cheaper for washing the car, saves me having to pay for water. If I could, I would use it for flushing the toilet as well. You don't really need drinking water. I mean, it's crazy to me. I've said this time and time again, but I will say it again. Why we pump perfectly good, dr fresh drinking water to our houses to use it to flush the toilet when perfectly good, dirty water falls from the sky, we could use that for flushing the toilet. I just think it's a, a wrong way round. Um, if I had my way, I would redo the entire house and the garden to capture as much rainwater as possible. Underwater storage tanks and redo the pumping, so by plumbing, so we could do that. Uh, Amanda says, I have four large water butts on the plot and one in the, the yard at home. I'd like a couple more at the plot and another one at home, though. Yeah, um, you know, I've never heard anybody say they wish they had less water storage. Everybody will say, I wish I could do more. Um, now, Digwell, <laughs> I will butt out, no pun intended, of the chat about storing water, as all of ours on the plots come from uh, come to us from a lake, courtesy of the garden centre. Uh, yeah, you know, not everybody can have water butts. There are a lot of allotments out there that do not allow water butts, and I again, I think that is wrong in some ways. But when it's down to aesthetics, like uh, Digwell's allotment the garden center at least the garden center are providing it i'm guessing if it's pumped from a lake the garden center are paying for that privilege as well um so yeah um i i think it's about trying to capture as much water as possible uh, best of all and i do think it's best to store it in the ground if you possibly can by that i mean you know Mulching, as Turbo Stream here says, on the recent podcast about mulch, my ears were burning when you mentioned leaves. Actually, they do work to keep the moisture in. My onion bed was still holding moisture even after all this leaf, wheat, this heat. Now, that brings me on to the next area, not just about rainwater harvesting, but also how you go out efficient watering. Mulch, mulch and mulch, for me, is just the way forward. It just holds on to so much more water in the soil where the plants need it, as well as just ma making the ground a lot easier to look after, less weeds. I use a lot of grass clippings, but compost, leaves, anything like that do work. And a turbo stream himself says lots of mulching and the ground is still moist. Ian says, what's washing the cars? <laughs> what's washing the car? Mine gets done every on, once in the last two years. Well, yeah, I still have to do it. Work, fan, and everything like that. Bally Soon says, I have water butts located at each line of raised beds and soak a hose attached to the hose. Snakes it way down the bed and I plant around it. If I find the plants, I find the plants get water better where needed. Now, this actually is something I was looking at setting up myself. I was going to set it up that each bed has its own water butt and I set up a soak hose in order to just water the garden, water my plants in a much easier way. Unfortunately, just couldn't quite get that into place at the moment, but it's something I'm going to look at in the future. Ballycillian would be great to see that if possible. Love to see that. Uh, Digwell says the garden centre made the lake. I, I um, a nursery near where I used to live. They actually built a reservoir, blew it up with dynamite to make the to make the ground. So it's not uncommon at all in order to feed their water systems. I mean, if you put yourself in the position of a nursery or a farm, you must go through a lot of water and you've got to use it. You've got to have that water. Uh, term extreme, I don't water my home garden. It has to fend for itself as mostly shrubs. Now, this is, a, again, something else that, you know, when we are trying to save water such as this, this hot weather we have been having, do we really need to water our trees? They've got pretty good big deep tap roots on them that, that goes down quite low. And 
fills out or finds the water lower down. You don't need to water every day, to be honest. And some of the larger trees, you probably don't need to water at all, unless it really is very, very dry. If they are in pots, then it's slightly different because they do need a good... Well, pots are completely different. And I'm not a fan, excuse me, of growing in pots as such, even though I do it a lot. I do prefer growing in the ground. But pots do need a lot more watering. Graham Arnold says, I've got a 1,000 litre IBC tank that's been empty since early May. And the taps broke. Ordered a replacement one, but it doesn't fit. Apparently, it's an old model of the tank. How annoying. How annoying is that? I'm sure it, I, keep looking, keep looking. Don't don't let it go to waste because I'm sure you do need it. Toby Stream, my onions were a disaster this year. The red onions rotted or went to seed. The white sensu were full of leaf miner grubs. I think I'm done with onions on my plot. That is a shame. That is a shame. I've done pretty well with my onions. They're yet uh, to be harvested, but... Um, Red onions rotting, that sounds to me more like a moisture problem, like too wet, not free draining enough, um, would be my guess, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, Jenny has joined. Sorry, I'm out just driving home. I'll be in a chat in a few minutes. Hope you're all well and having some rain. Indeed we are. And Gary says, I was also going to look at drip or soaker hoses for my water butt in my polytunnel. Now, in my actual greenhouse here at home, I've actually got a solar-powered watering system that just drip feeds into some of my plants, and it runs off the water butt. It actually works very, very well, because every, I think it's about every three hours, it just runs the pump and just shoots a load of water, which is great, because it does exactly what I need it to do. Um, and it, it does pr produce much better plants, because that constant need for water, that constant moistness, is all the way around. Bally Searing says, would send photo, but I plant, plant close together only as me and the wife, so don't require giant veg. And the beds are so lush, the hose can't be seen. We'll send when the beds are empty. That's fine. Love to see it anytime. And uh, Nicola says, seven IBC tanks and 17 times 220 litre tanks, four times builder tubs. Um, so, Plenty of plenty of water storage going on there. Obviously, she is in uh, three acres, so she has plenty of room in which to do it. She goes on to say four steel baths and 12 times 110 half, half of uh, water baths, half of those 220 litres. Excellent. So plenty of watering going on. Uh, Rebecca has been having the same trouble with onions that have bolted this year. If they're autumn sown, overwintered onions, there's a good chance that they will bolt. I always just snap off that flower stem as soon as I see it and use them a bit like chopped uh, spring onions. Sorry, just chop them up and, and eat them like that. Um, but you have to use them up first. But to be honest, when it comes to autumn onions, you're kind of used to it. That happens all the time. Uh, Thomas Stream says, when I do water my plot, I use a watering can. No hose pipes allowed down there. I direct the flow around the root and ensure that they get a good soak in twice a week. Now, that does bring me on to something else I want to talk about, is using a hose pipe or watering can. Personally, I always use a watering can. I brought this one, bought this one from Gardener's World the other day. My old watering can was starting to fall to pieces, so I got a new one. And uh, yeah, I'm a, I much prefer the watering cans because I just find it to be a little bit better, a little bit more controlled, able to get the spout right down to the plants, down to the soil, where the roots are, which is where the plants really need that moisture. Um, but I, what I do, if I'm, if I'm trying to get my plants to establish, I've just planted them out, then I water them daily. But after that, once they are established, I only give them a really good drenching about once a week. I want all my plants to really uh, develop some long, big roots so that they can find their own water source. And if you water daily, what tends to happen is the plants uh, produce a load of roots at the top of the soil, which is the area that dries out the most. Whereas if you can encourage your your plants to just go down deeper in search of the compost, in search of the moisture, sorry, do you a lot, lot better, a lot more good, to say the least. 
Uh, Stuart Jackson, I use a dripping watering system in the greenhouse. I just fill the bag up every two to three days. I'm thinking about doing a dripper hose for the veg patch. I'm not a fan of those. I was talking about this the other day, but uh, only because it ran through water quite quickly. But a lot of people were saying it was that's not their result. Uh, Turbo Stream says, my allotment is on clay, so perhaps the mulch was counterproductive on an onion bed. Possibly. Clay does is very moisture retentive. How much organic matter has been added to your, your clay beds? Clay is very good at holding on to water, almost too good in some cases, because it can create a bit of a, a pooling effect. But if you add in plenty of compost, plenty of organic matter, it does deal with it quite well. Uh, Owen has joined. I think I'll start growing using the crafting method of passive hydroponics. It seems like it will address the challenges associated with watering and compost consumption. Can you elaborate a bit more on this crafting method of passive hydroponics? I know what hydroponics is, but what the crafting method is and, and so on. Now, let us know what that is. Graham Arnold says, I've given up with sets, only grow from seed. Haven't had any bolters for the last three, three years now. Lucky you. Lucky you. I I prefer sets. I get annoyed with um, seeds for some reason, but I keep trying every year. Uh, Digwell says, washing in toilet water. When I worked for Thames Water, they were so worried about the likes virgin taking over unused boreholes, they had to pump them from them annually. Have I missed something? It feels like... Um, oh, no, it goes on. If unused for a year, then the bear holes, bull holes are at risk of a takeover and Virgin were at a stage of try anything, even when a new water supply to each house for non-drinking water. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I don't think it's a bad idea to try and try and run non-drinking water to, to use up for washing in toilets. So I'm very lucky. We have never had a hosepipe band. We are Wessex Water. Now, that's uh, quite a good point, actually, because hosepipe bands are something that do come around quite often. Uh, Nicola down in Cornwall has ha been on a hosepipe band since last summer, I believe. And uh, there was an alert out the other day for Kent and Sussex. L luckily, when I got home and I looked into it a bit further, it doesn't affect me. We're under southern water, not southeast water. But hosepipe bands are coming into play in many parts of the country. And I'm sure they're going to carry on into our area at some point. So, again, non-reliance on the hosepipe for me is just a better way of doing it. Um, Digwell says drippers also water when not needed. So you've got a good point there. They do. But what I do is I keep my drippers and I move them around to where they are needed. So I've, I've made the hoses on them really long so I can just move them. And even if that means having two drippers into one plant, doesn't do me any harm, I don't think. But you are right. They do work when not needed. But if you're using rainwater, then it works well. Uh, Thomas Stream, Birmingham water comes from Mid Wales, Eden Valley, Ellen Valley, sorry. So it would need to be very dry for us to run dry. It could happen though. It could happen. You know, hosepipe beds are more about rationing the water, if you like, to try and make sure it lasts a season. We probably do need more reservoirs, in all honesty, but even that so, they were, I remember in the 80s and 90s we were getting hosepipe bands. It's nothing new. Uh, Chilly Phil, even all late, Johnny. We're just coming back from the seaside in the rain. Very happy to finally have rain. I hope you had a good trip down on the seaside. But yeah, very happy to have rain. As I said, about one centimeter of rain we've had so far. Uh, Toby Stream, my onion bed has been well dressed with compost and organic matter, but have no dig. Perhaps I should fork the beds to incorporate it better without going too deep. You could do. I personally would just leave it. It takes a while, but just leave it on top um, and see what happens. Stuart Jackson says, we do have to look after our water as no new water is made, as I tell the children. We use the same water as the Romans. Completely right. Yes, we are recycling the water all the time, all the time. Uh, Bally soon then says, the last time we had a hose by ban, I cancelled tiled our allotments. We could still use a hose for food growing. Um, 
so if you're growing on a farm you can still use a hose pipe and i believe on an allotment you technically can still can can because it's considered agricultural land but on a home plot even for vegetables i don't think you can as i understand it when i've looked into it this might be something that um, digro can shed a bit more light after his time in the water board Digwell says, speak of a day, I'm not sure, but there was some HS intervention about the risk of drinking the untreated water, which does make sense. There is a company near me that will actually come to your house and fit a tank and redo the plumbing to do to for your washing machine. So you're washing your clothes in rainwater and for the toilet. Um, again, I just think that's a good idea. But uh, more importantly, it's about watering the, the uh, garden. Uh, turbo stream. I'm starting to think of my soil. No dig might be counterproductive. Only the top layer is decent soil. It's best when I have forked over a patch. I will keep on with the winter mulching. See what you, you, your garden on your own soil. You do what you feel is best. Give it a try, experiment, and just see what turns out the best. Owen says the crafty hydroponics method involves growing plants suspended above a reservoir of nutrient rich water. There are no electrical pumps needed to circulate the nutrient water. OK, with you now. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Makes does make a lot of sense. Might be something I I look into. I'm always trying or have been trying in the past with hydroponics, but uh, I might give it a good try next year. The rule that rule has changed from many areas here, as many were claiming food when washing their car, watering their car. Technically, under a hosepipe ban, I can still wash the van under um, with a hosepipe. This is a stupid thing because it's a commercial vehicle. It just does not make sense in some ways. That I think I think it should be use it for watering the garden. Yes or a tree that's dying water it but don't not not for washing a van not for washing a van uh right i'm going to go through a few photos that i took from gardeners world live we'll keep coming back to that let this conversation so please do keep sharing your thoughts and what you do about watering in the warm weather and how you try and conserve but as i said i spent a couple of days at gardeners world live on thursday and friday I met some of you there i know some of you were also there who we we we, we um were unable to meet for various reasons um let's have a look let's have a look so uh we won that one actually uh so let's see first of all I was looking around for a lot of vegetable or edible gardens, and there was a few, but these show gardens I particularly liked because everything was growing in pots. These were in the marquee. As you can see, there was currants in pots. There was microgreens down on the bottom in some solid wooden crates, and a load of um, leafy greens also in pots and pretty good ones as well this is a close up of the microgreens because i quite liked the look of this and i thought i might be trying this myself just looks really really good i felt uh, and this is a wide up shot of all the salad bowls just just clay pots with salads growing into them looked absolutely fantastic i've got to say these were lettuces mustards uh leafy greens you name it if it, they would do it looked really good i felt uh, woolly pots. This was something that I discovered at an event earlier this year. Basically, replacing the wool with the replacing plastic plots with these sort of wool socks. Idea being, then you can take these pots and grow them and plant them straight in the ground. And what Gardeners World have been doing is they've been running this sort of last couple of years. Um, Basically, where you can take your, you buy any plants, you take those plastic pots and they pot them into something reusable or recyclable um, to, to for you to take them home with. And it means that those plastic pots get recycled. And this year it was woolen pots. Now, I like the pots themselves, but I did find that my plants were easy falling over in the bag and getting a little bit damaged. So not great for transportation, these woolen pots, I'll be honest with you. But once they're home, absolutely fine. 
Uh, that was me, in case you haven't worked it out. That was me as on the first day, on the Thursday, just when I first got in there. Just hated this photo, but I thought I'd share it anyway. Uh, next, this was the, the Vegetable Society Garden. And this was one of the most spectacular veg gardens. They do this every year. It just looks absolutely fantastic. Some nice rows of some very, very good looking vegetables. You know, cabbages, kale, peas, uh, lots of really, really good looking plants. Um, I thought there was more, but obviously not. Uh, lots of really good looking plants. So it did great. Uh, two of my friends, Saul and Lucy from the Talking Heads podcast on the Plant Experts stand. Had a good chat with those, as always. Uh, if you've got a question, they're the people to go and ask when you're there because they will really, really do a good job at helping you out. Um, such knowledgeable and lovely people as well. Now, this was a really nice wild garden. Um, it was a... Uh, the, the house in the background was like a, a flat pack, small house, uh, recyclable, redredative and re what have you. But I just liked the look of all these wildflowers at the front. Just looked absolutely stunning, I've got to say. Um, oh, this is a selfie. I, I'm used to say, taking selfies, I'll be honest. So when I, I met some of you, I forgot to do this. But Jenny, who is on the uh, left-hand side of this photo, uh, we met up with her towards the end of the, the day on the Thursday. And Rebecca was with me as well, who is on the other side, on the right-hand side. We did this selfie. So uh, that is Jenny and Rebecca. I think that is it. Yeah, that is it from those photos. Oh, hang on. Long one. That is it from those photos. So... Yeah, uh, great day. If you went there, let me know what a day you had and whether or not you enjoyed it. I had a really good day. Uh, well, two days. Um, highlight for me was the She Grows Veg Garden because everything in there was edible. I had a good chat with, with Lucy as well. First time I really had a chance to chat to her. And um, that for me was my favourite garden, closely followed by one of the beautiful borders, which was made by Adam or Green City Fingered, Green Fingered City Boy. Um, lovely, lovely lot of good photos. Uh, Digwell is saying no polyculture. Talking about the um, photo, we uh, talking about the Veg Society plot. Yes, it was. It not polyculture at all. It was good though. I liked it. Um, Rebecca says, such a lovely day and so wonderful to spend some time with you. Indeed, it was. It was nice to spend time with all of you. Kate was also there. We, we caught up with Kate um, and quite a few others. What we said we'll do next year, if we tr all try and work out a day that we're going to go, we might all go to a pub afterwards for something to eat or something, is our, our what we were thinking of doing as well, just to, just to try and make it a bit more of a social group. Um, and what I would, what I can do next year, if anybody is thinking of going, there's also the autumn one coming up as well. I can get discount codes if anybody is after those as well. So if you're thinking of going next year, let me know. Uh, what was it? Digwell said, sad to miss you at going as well live, but only spent 10 minutes in the garden inside chatting with Veggie Pod. I've got to say, I didn't get into the good food, even though I, I was there for two days. Didn't get into the good food side as much as I would have liked. I feel the show is getting so big now that I certainly need to spend two days there to get around everything. And in honesty, I could probably spend more because I chat to so many people. Um, there's some really good people, Adam Frost, um, Chris Collins, you know, all these people that we chat to. On the way round, it's just just so such a good good chance to network and intermingle and what have you. Uh, what else have we got? What else have we got? Uh, Anna Jones says, "Great photo, Jenny and Rebecca." Um, and Jenny says, "What a gorgeous bunch, indeed, indeed." It was smiles all round though, wasn't it? That's what I like about those days. Said so I came away with this new watering can. I also got myself. I've been using it. A new trowel. I think they call this the Monty Don trowel. Just get into new tools at the moment. Um, a few plants. Uh, 
was it the hardy orange and i can't remember what the other plant was but i came away with a few plants um i can't remember what else i did but it, you know overall really good two days out cannot wait to go next year again if you're thinking of going to gardeners world live next year we'll arrange a meet up and, and sort it all out again uh, Ian Benos, I was just thinking about collecting shower, watering each day into a container for the garden. We'll need to see if someone local can do it for me. Here, all grey water is used to water. That's the way it should be. I've been trying to figure out a way we can do that with our shower, but it's not easy to do in our house um, or our bath water. But if there's a will, there's a way. There must be a way I can do it. Jenny says, I had a wonderful show. Really enjoyed myself. I would have liked more veg, but got lots of inspiration for wildlife. Um, yeah, I've got to say, I would have liked more veg. This is a, a, I say this at most shows, though. Veg, unfortunately, is becoming a little bit less in the shows until you get into the autumn ones. I think there'll be more autumn uh, veg gardens. But that being said, it's an all-round gardening show, so it, it's difficult to cover every single thing. Um, I think there used to be a show called the Edible Garden Show. That was all about edible gardening, and we need to bring that one back. Nigel, Muddy Boots and I have spoken about this before. We need to bring that show back somehow because that was a good one. Um, Jenny says, I would love to go for a meal next year. We'll sort something out because I think it would be um, – it would be good to do that. Uh, Anna says, watched it on Gardener's World on Friday. It looked like a really good show. It really was. It really was. I highly recommend it. It's, for me, it's my favourite show. I find I've not been to Chelsea, but I've seen enough of it to know I'm a little bit put off by it. Um, Gardener's World, and everyone at the show sort of said, this is the down-to-earth gardeners, not the flamboyant stuff. I mean, I know there'll be a lot of debate on that, but I really enjoyed it. Jenny says, I got some seeds, mainly tomatoes from Burpee's stand. I ended up taking two plants home for a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two plants. We remember seeing them. And, you know, again, you, the plants you can buy anywhere, but getting them at a the show, you get that real knowledge from the people selling it, I feel. Uh, if going for a meal, etc. next year, then it would need months of need months of notice for the train and the hotel bookings yeah we will we will work it all out i'll find out the dates and everything and i will work it all out so that we can try and organize it so that everybody can go um everybody that wants to go and or work out where we can have a meal and stuff we'll do something ian says did you manage to avoid skinny gene yes i did he wasn't there um he rang me on the Friday, but he didn't He didn't make it, unfortunately. Hopefully, I'll be catching up with him in a couple of weeks' time at another show. Graham says, wish I would do more vegetables on Gardener's World TV program. Find Beach Grove, do more on veg. Again, I cannot watch Beach Grove. No matter, I cannot find it anywhere. But I'm with you. I wish I would do more vegetables on Gardener's World. So travel is, you know, you've got to remember they're trying to make a gardening program that encompasses all gardening not just vegetables. Again, the ideal thing would be to have a edible garden TV show, uh, especially if it's allotment-based. I think I think there's got to be something in it. There has got to be something in it. Nicholas says, I had to miss Gardener's World Live due to low blood pressure causing a fall. And, oh, and also log swelling too much in the heat, hopefully next year. I hope you're okay, Nicola. hope you're okay. Um, far better that you missed it. But, yeah, if you do want to go next year, let me know. I'll sort out the discount codes um, in advance. But do be warned, it does normally go on in the summer when it is hot. Jenny says, I mainly water with a hose because it's easier for me. Yeah. Um, we have made a swale in a large bed, which is also a path. So hopefully that will be tested this week as we finally have decent rain. So swale, this is... A permaculture technique, as I understand it. Swale is basically where you create a ditch on contour. Uh, so basically you make sure that when it rains, all that that water is collected in a ditch and then feeds itself into the soil, as I understand it. Um, I don't know much about swales. I understand it in my head, but to talk about it, I don't know much about it. But it's something that I have been 
looking a lot into or uh, for, to find out more. Uh, Tommy Stream says, I felt that Gardner's World and the Malvern Spring lacked much in the way of interest for the vegetable grower. And they should be having more coverage as food prices are so high. I agree. I do completely agree. I come back to the fact that they're trying to encompass everything. Um, and I, the trouble is if people, if people are growing vegetables to save money, they're not going to go to a show and spend money to the show um, in, in theory. So that might be a slight downside. But I, again, I, I can con I will be speaking to Gardner's World and sort of say we want to see more veg. And if that's something that we can do, then we'll do it. We will do it. Um, I'm sure there must be a way we can do that. I'll, I'll, I'll contact them. I will see what I can do. Uh, Jenny says, I'm looking to make a sand watering box bed for, for, pot, for pots. And I also pile up the wood chips around the potatoes, etc., to try and hold moisture in. Two new water butts fitted and they all started to fill. Excellent. Um, uh, you know, more water butts are better. I'd like to know more about this sand watering box bed for pots, how that works though. Can you can you go into that a little bit more detail? Because it sounds quite interesting. Digwell says, my partner and myself were quite glad we spent the six hours we had in the food show. I think to be fair, if you are there for a short for a short time, I mean I love the gardeners. I didn't get to the food show that much. Love the gardener's side, and I, I do feel there is a lot of it, but you've got to throw yourself into it. Uh, on the second day, I met up with a couple of friends of mine, Mar um, Martha the Chicken, her original owner, um, and they – it was quite interesting because they were um, – it was – what's her name? Lisa and Ingrid were their names, and they're quite young females, and they were – just so talkative with everybody that they, they just spent so much time taking photos and talking that it suddenly sort of came, came away seeing wow they got a lot out of that it is a case of throwing itself into it digwell says i have already left my feedback excellent i will do the same i will do the same um as i said i'm a big fan of the veg gun but i feel there was a show, and I, I, we've, we've spoken about this. There was a show called The Edible Garden Show a few years ago now. It, it got closed down, unfortunately. It was, I can't remember where it was originally. I went to the one when it was at Alexander Palace. Really good show, I've got to say. Really good show because it was all about edible gardening. It just needed a bit more, a bit more finesse. There was a lot going for it. It just needed a little bit more. Uh, unfortunately, it got closed down. It just obviously wasn't profitable, but it was such a shame because I would, I, I think we could do something. And what Nigel and I have said in the past is they should do something like the Edible Garden Show alongside Gardeners World Live. Um, it would be good. It would be really good. Uh, Thomas Stream, I dipped my food, dipped into the food show last year. If I go again, I will do the same. The food show is great. I just don't get enough time to spend in there. Think of a swell as banking moisture reserves for plants to use when needed. Sand water box bed is literally a raised bed filled with sand, ideally silver or horticultural sand. You gently twist the, I think there's going to be more coming to that. Um, so I'll come back to that in a second. Even if they had a veg TV program, everything would be perfect. I prefer the YouTube vlog that shows the boards and all. That says Bally Sin. I agree with you on that. I do agree with you. And that's what I like about the YouTubers is that you do see the bad stuff as well as the good stuff. But I think that's important on the shows to incorporate the good and the bad, you know, in my opinion. Uh, Jenny has gone on to say that you gently twist the pots into the stand and water well. The sand holds the water that runs from the pot but holds it for the plant to use. You need to line the bottom of the bed with only a few holes, so not a pond. Okay, okay, I can I can see this being quite useful actually. Hmm, I'm gonna look into this. I can see this being very, very useful. 
Uh, Turbo Stream says it would be nice if Shogun's added some ornamental veg into their planting. Um, well, there was a there was a garden there by Lucy Hutchins, or she grows veg. Who's um, she's 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 she she has a lot of the same sentiments as I do in that we should be growing more edibles, and that uh, edible gardening is lacking in some ways but her garden she grew what would be considered a lot of ornamentals your hostas your dahlias your oh, i can't think of any others off the top of my head but things that we would consider ornamentals but they're actually edible and everything on her garden was edible but you may not realize it um and a lot of people were, were completely shocked that hostas or dahlias were edible <laughs> And it's true. It is so true, especially when you get into the history of these plants and find out like the dahlias, they were imported because of their food properties. Um, Ian says, is it not a problem that when your homegrown veg is ready to harvest is the time supermarkets reduce prices? I know taste from homegrown is far superior. Yes, that's supply and demand though, isn't it? You know, if supply's low, the demand and the demand's there, they put the prices up. Supply's high, there's less demand. So you are right. You are completely right. But you've got to remember that our homegrown goodness is a lot better tasting, probably got a lot more nutrients because it's fresher. Um, whereas, you know, supermarket stuff could be two, three weeks old before you buy it. And flavour is not the most important thing the supermarkets look for. It's transport bit transport being transportable is their high priority um uh what else have we got stuart jackson says i've built seven show gardens four of them had veg and we got marked down because of a veg the judges just want flowers this is a problem that we came across as well actually i've had conversations with a few people about the judging and a lot of the judgings were sort of saying well we don't do that in horticulture and it could be putting certain plants with other plants and there was no other reason other than the fact that's not what they do for the show gardens and somebody else i know got knocked down because they grew all their own plants rather than relying on the nursery knocked down for growing their own plants you know the the show gardens show gardens are great to see what you can do but they are very very false and if you're going for the awards then you've got to go for make the, the stuff that they're looking for unfortunately it's one of these things that i feel needs to change jenny says the forever wonderful peter seabrook has a video on making one in on youtube i will have to look it up um i will have to look it up Every gardening show looks the same to me these days, but the food shows change every time. New produce, food from places unpronounceable, rum, rum, gin, vodka, loads of foods and sticks to try. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I find the food shows are often very similar as well. But again, I think what I find with the gardening shows is it's the show gardens and the talks. You've got to throw yourself into it to get the most out of it um, and see what we got. Stuart Jackson says, we need to leave reviews that may help these show change it the way they see the garden. Yeah, I agree with that. I completely agree with that. Turbo Stream says, one of the YouTube gardeners made a water reservoir out of a clay pot into a raised bed. She plugged a hole and filled it with water and the moisture gradually seeped out over time. Yes, that is, there is this is coming back to the main subject, of course, of, of uh Rainwater. There is, oh, I can't think what the pots are called. It's an old fashioned technique, but um, they would make some clay plots that were uh, allowed water to transfer in and bury those pots and plant around those. I cannot remember what they're called. I've done something similar with my pumpkins down on the Yolob, and I've taken an old clay pot, submerged that into the ground, and I've been watering into that to, to form my pumpkins. It works really well works really well just cannot remember what this method of gardening is but yeah it is literally a, a sunken clay pot you fill the pot up with water and it just gradually seeps into the ground even better with a good mulch 
Uh, Bally Soon says, Digwells, you should have a stand at the food shows. I know no one that cooks and preserves better than you. Indeed, indeed. Um, Jenny says, maybe with the cost of living and lifestyle changes, a call for edible gardens may increase and designers start using them as shows. I guess they follow trends or try and set a trend. Uh, and when it comes to the garden shows and the judges, it's very much... I'm going to use a word that I, that that may be offensive, but it's very old fashioned. They've got the old fashioned look out. They don't really care about the fashions. They're, it's very much the 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 old old ways. Unfortunately, um, I think the only way to do it is to make our own edible garden show. I don't know how we would do it, but something like the edible garden show, make our own one and make it a success. If anybody knows anything about how to create and run a show like that, get in touch and we'll see what we can do. I don't know where we would do it. Uh, I'm not against garden shows, don't get me wrong, but nice as the show gardens are, how many people see them and actually change a garden to match? I take ideas for them. I do take ideas from the garden shows. Last year, uh, Frances Tophill, she was using old sinks in her garden i've done that for my herb garden so it is an idea i certainly do think it is an idea um are they called all or something those clay sunken clay pots i think they are i think they are uh digra says all oh, ola pots that's it there we go yeah ola pots there we go uh, Rebecca says, but it's a show. Nobody wants to see real life. Half dead veg plants covered in aphids. Yeah, they show off what plants can look like and tell stories for guns. This is exactly right, Rebecca. Um, it is exactly right. It is not a real garden, but it's to show you what you could do. And often the garden designers are there to try and get work for themselves. So they promote it themselves. Um, yeah, it's it's not. As clear cut as what we, we, we like to make it out, or, or not quite as clear cut as we think sometimes. Um, what I liked is at the one in Bewley uh, back at the end of April, uh, Gardeners, Gardeners World again, you had to show gardens, which showing you what your garden could look like. And then you would go over to the walled garden and you would actually see what the garden does look like, especially the vegetable garden at the moment. So, so there you go. The, you know, any C isn't great for that, but that is what it is. Um, <laughs> that's my allotment in one sentence, absolutely. Uh, let's make a stunning edible garden at Garner's World Live, the Veg Growers Podcast Garden. Let's show them how it's done. You're the second person to have suggested this to me. I would love to. I would love to. I am just no good at designing anything, no good at putting anything on paper. Um, Let's, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do, shall we? We're not going to pass that idea. Let's make a note of that. Um, um, show garden. Let's see what we can do and see if what we can do, what we have. we got to remember they set certain themes, though, so we've got to be a little bit careful to, to run with the themes that they set up. But we'll look into it. And Rebecca likes the idea. Um, Turbo Stream says Ola's pots just looked it up. God, remember it's about three weeks' work as well, setting the garden, building the garden, um, and everything else. But if we can find some sponsors, we'll see what we can do. Team effort, indeed, indeed, indeed. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Um, <laughs> Stuart Jackson says, sorry, had to pop to Facebook. Show Garden, are you mad? Yes, we are mad. Um, and Turbo Stream, I have my first entry for the Veg Podcaster show. Indeed. So this is a good idea. That's a good idea. Design a show garden. I'm going to make a note of that because we will discuss this in a future, future episode because... This is something we can definitely look into. Um, if we're to do it, I will obviously need your help as well. If you're all on board with it, 
if you want to be on board with it, then it's definitely something we can look at. Problem is, we would all have very different ideas, a bit like a hung jury. So you are right. You are right. We would all have different ideas. We will we will have to come up. We either all vote and whatever gets the most votes on certain aspects. Um, and if it's hung, then I will put myself as the final, as the deciding one, just be, just to be to try and do that. We'll, we'll work out the details. We <laughs> speak of a devil. Do it, suck it, do it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's Shogun. Let's, let's see what we can do. Let's well, let's look into let's look into the details and everything. But I think. If you want to do it, we'll see if we can do it. I'll put it like that. If you want to do it, we'll see what we can do. Um, we could all have a section each or in small groups showing the different styles of veg gardens. Again, we would have to find out the themes. We would have to come up with ideas. I think a section each isn't quite going to work, but we're going to take ideas from each person and implement it. Just as Stuart says, who's experienced, my last show garden took six months to plan and grow and three and a half weeks to build. But it's an amazing experience, but not Chelsea. If we're going to do it, we'll do it at somewhere like Gardener's World, either the spring or autumn fair or the um, um, not the, the one. The, the one in Birmingham, the live, the live, that's it. Turbo Stream says, a logistical nightmare given how we live miles away from everyone else. Yeah, but, you know, we it may be a logistical nightmare. We've got the, the advantage that we can discuss it through having regular meetings with, over the internet with our stuff. I just suddenly realised it's going to be three and a half weeks away from my dog. That's going to be the worst bit. Um. Let's see what we can do. Then coming together as one big garden community. Yeah, definitely. Definitely something I think we can do. I th <laughs> and Turbo Stream says I can supply leaves as a mulch. Yeah, we may actually need some leaves. We may actually need some leaves. Um, so... Bally Sillian says, not putting the idea down, but would we have the facilities to have mature veg ready for a show garden? So when it comes to the show garden, something I learned this week is that if we are to grow our own vegetables, one, it would be very difficult to get them ready and looking great for the show garden. But if we were to do it, we would actually lose points because they expect, and I think it's wrong, but they expect us to get them from one of their approved nurseries. It's wrong. Don't get me wrong, but it's if we were to do a show garden, we would have to, in order to score high. Um, and all that it's about scoring high, it's about getting the recognition. But it, yeah, I, I agree with you, Belly Sin. There is certain problems. Um, and then Rebecca, I think we're all getting carried away, maybe. We should just stick for going for our tea. Let's find out a bit more about it. I'll leave uh, park that idea. We're not going to definitely not do it. As I said, Lee and Skinny Jeans and I have been discussing this over the last few weeks. So with Skinny Jean on board, it'd probably be a little bit easier in some ways as well. Um, if, if we do the autumn show, it will be a seasonal veg, which would be amazing to teach visitors. It's still a lot of work. It's still a lot of work. And, you know, as Rebecca said, and Digwell's agreeing, you know, maybe we're getting a little bit carried away. Uh, we are doing a show, though, aren't we, later this year? We are doing the show, yes, the, the online show. We are doing the um, the Alternative Veg Grower Show. We are doing that. So we'll see how that goes. But um, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I'm not gonna I'm not dismissing the idea at all. Let's do some research into it and see how we all feel if we're gonna do this. 
It would be amazing. The build was one of the best times ever. Growing veg, you just need to have contacts at nurseries. I'm sure one of the veg companies would be up for it. Indeed. Indeed. I'm sure there will be ways that we can do it. Um, if children can build show gardens, I'm sure we can do it too. I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. But I don't want to get too carried away. So, on that note, let's have a look at the grow along for this week. This was decided by you guys. So, let's see what we've got. Good morning, everybody. Hope you are well. We are here for another grow along video. This is a chance where I sow some seeds and invite you to sow seeds along with me, but also share your tips and tricks on how to grow a certain vegetable in order to help other people who may be watching to grow their own food as well. Leave your comments down in below. Now this week, the seed that we're actually sowing is Swede. And this was voted on by members of our live stream that we do on a Sunday night. So what do we know about the Swede plant? It's also known as rutabaga and it is a cool weather plant. It's a winter vegetable crop. It's a good one, I've got to say, closely related to turnips, funnily enough. Now the sweet plant itself has a thick bulbous root, which is what we eat, usually purple or yellow in colour, and uh, generally a creamy yellow flesh inside, which is great in a wide range of dishes, smashed swede being one of my favourites, usually available on our Christmas table as well. I've always had trouble growing swede in the past, so hopefully this year we're going to make that a bit better. Now, originally, Swedes were grown um, in the 17th century from Sweden, where they were known as Swedish turnips, hence which been abbreviated down to Swede. But they're also known as rutabagas in other parts of the world. They're generally grown in the cool weather areas, the cooler winters, not all the cooler summers too. Not so much the tropics, but certainly here in the UK, Canada, Sweden, etc., etc. Many regions will grow them, as you know. So. That's a bit about the plants. Let's get on and sow the seeds. To sow these seeds, I'm sowing these in my plug planters. Reason being is that Swede generally doesn't like its roots to be disturbed. These are the seeds here, very, very small. So we're just going to put a couple of seeds in each plug part. Now, germination should take between 10 to 14 days, by which point we're going to let these continue to grow. The compost in here is just a very fine multi-purpose compost. It does need to be quite a fine for seed sowing. Seed compost is best, but I've just used multi-purpose for these purposes. And 10 to 14 days until germination. Once they are germinated, we will allow them to grow and then keep potting these seedlings up into bigger and bigger pots as their needs are required. Now this can be quite a quick process to be honest, especially at this time of year. But we could also sow the seeds directly into the soil where they are to grow. The trouble I have is that the ground gets very weedy and it strangles out any of our seedlings. So I prefer to sow them like this. Now talking of the soil of where they are to grow, Swede does like plenty of sunlight, but it likes free draining but moisture retentive soil. So plenty of compost and manure added to the beds prior to planting. Added to that, they also do like to have a bit of lime added to the bed as well. Lime just adjusts the pH. These are from the brassica family, so they benefit from going in with your cabbages or your kales just to make it a little bit better. They are a winter crop, of course, so we would expect to be harvesting these Swedes in the winter months. So personally, as I said earlier, they're great on the Christmas table. Now, added to that, they're very easy to look after. We keep them well watered, make sure they don't get waterlogged, moist, but always stay moist. We keep them weed free, and the occasional balanced fertilizer feed. Grow more chicken manure pellets, are some of the ones that I personally use. And that's it. That's as easy as they are to grow. Well, there we go. That's all the seeds sown. Germination should take 10 to 14 days, providing everything goes to plan. So we'll keep a close eye on those. And as I said, we'll pop them up as they go along. Now, that is it for today's Grow Along. As always, please do share your Swede growing tips down below in the comments. It'd be great to hear a few tips from everyone out there. 
We'll be, be we'll be back again next time if I can get my words out. We will be back again next time. So until then, please take care. So there we go. This week's grow along the swede is planted. Don't forget to share your tips on growing swede and also any ideas of what we could do for next week's grow along uh, any seeds that you particularly want me to sow um i've got no ideas at the moment possibly lettuce is one that i've got an idea of but let me know a uh, few comments came in during that so first of all digwell says have you any idea how much it actually costs to put together an exhibit a show gun carry me out as a pensioner don't worry i wouldn't expect any of you to put your hands in your pocket and pay but yes i do have ideas on how much it costs um, it depends on how big you want to go and um also how you know you don't have to spend a fortune on it i mean a friend of mine a couple of years ago their show garden was sixty thousand pounds which is a lot of money this year another friend of mine was four thousand pounds but as i said there are ways we can work around things so don't 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 worry too much don't worry too much about the finance side we'll worry about that near the time i should say uh what else have we got ian is saying would it be better to grow some veg and have a meet up in my field if you can free overnight if you need bring it along and richard can be the judge it's an idea. It's an idea. I think um, everyone really wants to do a show garden to try and get the vegetables back into gardeners' world is what, what the uh, impression I get. Um, and Bally Sinan says, and have dig well, oh, have I read this one? Have a side preserving sideshow garden and food hall combined. I was thinking of incorporating a barbecue, actually, because that might work. But again, it depends. If we did a beautiful borders garden, you know, a small barbecue would go okay, but can't really be on it at the time. Uh, Nicholas says, can you tell us what's special about your new watering can? There's nothing really special about it. It's just a watering can. My old one is falling apart. So I just figured I'll get one while I could. The only thing, I guess, is you can, on, on this bit here, you can attach a hose to fill it up without it spraying everywhere. And on this bit, it's a bit stiff, but this bit does come off to clean or pop off like that to clean it out that's the only thing i would say nothing really special about it just i needed a new watering can um now my sweet tip keep rabbits off your seedlings and young plants try very hard not to swear yep yep rabbits can be a big problem so definitely a tip there and uh, digwell says be careful with mpk for decent swede boron is good though yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's difficult to find the right feed, isn't it? I mean, you can end up with so many different feeds, but uh, again, with you. That's why I didn't recommend your normal sort of tomato feeds. You wouldn't use those on Swedes because that's not really what you want. You're looking for good roots. So probably, if anything, a seaweed feed, if you're going down the liquid route, would be good for Swede. That's a sweet coming up there. Um, we do have some of your photos to go through as well. The conversation really is is being good tonight, so I haven't got through everything. Uh, and also, as I said, I want ideas for the grow along for next week and next week's subject. So, the list I've got for next week's subject. One that I thought of is what do you do with your garlic harvests? Because next weekend we will be harvesting our garlic. I've got a, another video I could show you on that as well. Um, but if you don't want to do garlic harvests, we've got compost making, um, use grow your own to help you lose weight, smoothie recipes, green manures, um, and design a show garden, which we've discussed tonight. We might do this show garden next week. Um, just a few ideas for next week's topic. If you've got any, let me know. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Garlic harvest is a great idea, uh, says somebody in a Facebook group. Um, and Digwell also says garlic for me. Okay, two in for garlic. That was quick, wasn't it? Um, I, funny enough, I was thinking of garlic and what we do with our garlic harvests. So two already. See if anybody else comes up with the same sort of thing. I would. I would I, that's almost what I would say I want to do because 
well, it's Wednesday, 20, it's the 18th day, 19th, 20, 21st is Wednesday, which will be the longest day. So 22nd, 23rd, 24th is when Charles Dowden says to harvest garlic, which is Saturday. So uh, Jenny says garlic, please. So I think garlic harvest is good one. There we go. That's on the list, which will be very topical because I should be able to finish off all my garlic harvests. Um, uh, Stuart says, sorry, garlic harvest is good, storage, etc. Thanks, Stuart. No problem. Yep, I think the uh, the garlic harvests and what you do with your garlic harvests is going to be the top one. Um, oh, yeah, don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget, uh, if you've enjoyed the show, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a subscribe, and click the notification so that you know when we go live. Almost forgot to say that. Almost forgot to say, please give us a live. Um, garlic's good with me. And Graham is saying Savoy cabbages for a grow along. Did we do cabbages recently? I can't remember. I think we did do cabbages at the beginning of June, if I remember correctly. Um, I'll be able to have a look in a minute. Um, Charles Dowding, my garlic tells me when to harvest, not him. Funny enough, that's exactly what I said as well. Um, however, if you watch his, watch his information, he makes a very compelling case about when is the right time to harvest garlic. I think he usually said usually around the 24th of June. Um, but as I said, uh, I've got a video... It should have been out earlier this week, but it probably come out on Tuesday or something about my early purple white, early white garlic that should be ready at the end of May. I had to harvest it uh, last Friday, I think it was. So, yeah, a little bit late, a little bit late with that because it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. Um, Charles Dowden is the god. Yeah. Yes, I know. I know. I know what you're saying there, but. He makes some very compelling cases. I mean, that being said, in the past, I've left my garlic in the ground for too long before. So um, it's a very fine balance, as it's been said. It's a very fine balance between not harvesting it early enough or harvesting it too late. Um, Rebecca says, what about some herbs for the grow along? Parsley, coriander, chives or dill, maybe. You know what? That's a very good idea. A herb. I'm thinking chives would be a good one because I love chives anyway. I grow a lot of chives. I think we've done dill in the past and we've done basil in the past. Parsley and coriander, maybe a bit too hot for them. We can give it a try, but it may be a bit too hot. But I'm thinking chives would probably be the better one. But let me know what you guys think on that. Uh, I tell you what, let's have a look at some of your photos that you have been posting over this last week as well, where you guys decide on that. So Shipyard Garner, it's been Father's Day, of course. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. He has been spoilt with a new vegetable and herb expert book, a diary, what did I plant book, as well as what looks like a terracotta cup. Um, so good, good gifts there. Nicola has been enjoying her strawberry harvest. I've got to say, these look absolutely fantastic. Uh, good lot of strawberries that have been coming in and good harvests, got to say. Good, good, good there. Stephen has wired in his raspberry plants. This has been something that he um, needed to do with his summer raspberries and helps them grow quite nicely and controlled. Uh, Ian, now we mentioned the lemon tree earlier. He's found it a little bit too warm to prune his lemons, but as you can see, this is what he was doing. I've got to say, looking at the amount of lemons on there, I was very, very jealous. But this is in, of course, Portugal. I would love to have that sort of lemons growing on our ground. Um, would it be great? I've been discussing, actually, about lemons quite a bit lately. Uh, Kate, this is Kate, who unfortunately wasn't um, when we took the selfie. Uh, but the, she took her own selfie at the show. Um, absolutely fantastic to see you as well, Kate. Loved it, loved it, loved it. 
Uh, Steve's grandkids are in his in their Sunday best. Uh, Steve has done some merchandise for his YouTube channel, and here they are all wearing the uh, the T-shirts. I personally am planning on getting myself one of his aprons at some point as well. So do go check those out. I think that is it. Oh no, Scott. Funny enough, related to what we've been discussing today, somebody suggested using the Bosch water pump, and he said he is absolutely loving it and wants to thank whoever suggested it. The, using the Bosch water pump to hose use the hose in his allotment is obviously saving a lot of time. There you go. Good idea indeed. That is the last one. I just realised I forgot to do the little message I normally come up with the ending. Um... Stuart says chives sound good, um, but then Graham Arnold is saying fennel grow along, and Anna Jones is also saying Florence fennel for a grow along after the longest day. So I think Florence fennel could be the one for that very reason. Florence fennel, I don't really like it, but I will do it anyway. Florence fennel is on the list. We're going to do that next week. That's a good idea, isn't it? Good idea, but it makes sense. Andrew Noyce has joined. Damn late again. Good to be here. Have been out filming my neighbour's bail store. Oh, lovely to see you, Andrew. Um, I'll have to check out that video when it comes out. But he said, I sent away for filled bean seeds for overwinter green manure, but it came in a plain packet. I know it's too early, but when do you sow, sow it? So I usually sow mine sort of October, November time. Um or get it in the ground. That's when I would usually say October, November for overwintering. But you can pretty much do it in the spring as well. Uh, I'm trying to think if I got a packet here. I probably have somewhere, but I'm not going to grab it because I think everything will fall down. Uh, Digwell says, my mistake this year was to buy garlic that was recommended on a show. Could not find it from suppliers, so brought it from Etsy. Chesnock White was both white and red. That's on there, uh, yeah. That's unusual. Uh, I get all my garlic from the garlic farm on the Isle of Wight. Um, it's for me just so much. This they're, they're a really good company to deal with, and they know what they're talking about. So, the garlicfarm.co.uk is where to look for that. Um, and if they haven't got it, there's a good reason why they haven't got it. Graham Arnold, are you trying the Christmas dinner bed this year? No, not exactly. What I found when I've done the Christmas dinner bed in the past is where I would have the brassicas and things like carrots and, and the different families, it just didn't work very well together. So what I've decided to do is just use my entire home plot to grow food for the Christmas dinner. So I've got the brassicas are growing, be growing cabbages for Christmas dinner. It's got the... Um, uh Brussels sprouts and things like that so i'm doing that instead of uh an entire bed of christmas dinner but everything that i harvest on christmas day will be coming from the garden leeks they're in the garden carrots excuse me etc etc um it, yeah so it doesn't make sense just using the entire garden instead uh, so it when the last crop of the year is harvested to Ballysin, talking about the field beans, yeah, when you're not going to use that bed again for the rest of the year, sow field beans. Uh, if you're going to grow garlic, I get mine from the Isle of Wight. Really good customer service as well, says Stuart. Um, Digwell says, out of stock at Garlic Farm. They will be out of stock at the moment, but normally they dispatch them around the end of September. So they might be... Um, they might be out of stock at the moment, but come September, it's in stock. Keep a close eye on it. The only the, there may be a reason that they don't have it, however, and I'm not sure why, but uh, you never know. You never know why. Uh, I've not heard of that particular variety, to be honest. I like my my very early white, fantastic blow bulbs, cork white, uh, Provence white as well. A mixture of the the, the, the soft necks and the hard neck varieties, as they are known. Uh, but my biggest trouble, we'll get into this next week, really. My biggest trouble, of course, is rust. We get a lot of rust on our allotment. 
for some reason or another. Again, this Charles Dowden grows his in the polytunnel to avoid rust. I cannot, cannot do that. Just cannot do that. Um, unless I pot something over one of the beds. But no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to grow ours in a polytunnel. Um, Stuart says, I always get my garlic in August while up when I am on the island. So it makes sense. Again, garlicfarm.co.uk is a great supplier for garlic and garlic feed, as well as their knowledge and their experience. They grow some amazing garlic. Um, I've got to visit their farm. It's on my list of places to go. Uh, this year, I just don't know if anybody else has felt like this year is just flying by. All the plans that I had to go out places have been taken over by actually doing the gardening. Um, so, yeah. Um, out of stock as it's not one of their white varieties, so sells out quickly. Um, all right, so, yeah, you've just got to time it right. Just keep an eye, keep keep an eye on the timing or keep an eye on their website and see when it's available. I'll do the same, actually. Um, again, garlic, we'll get into how to grow garlic a bit more next week because yeah, I think it's a, a good subject. It's one of my favourite things to grow because I love garlic. There's so many things we can do it. But this is next week. I want to find out like what you do once you harvest your garlic. How do you store it? How do you preserve it? Um, what do you cook with it if you used it or anything like that? But that's what I want to find out. And Digwell, have you got any recipes for garlic that you've used in the past that we could look at? Uh, or anybody else for that matter, if anybody else has any videos, recipes, things like that that we could look at. Uh, Steve from Ki Steve's Kitchen Seaside Development and Kitchen Garden grows field beans for tips to eat as well. Because you can eat the tips, a bit like broad beans, you can eat the tips of all these field beans, these green manures as well. So it's not a wasted crop. You get something out of it. I grew field beans last year, and they grew really big, actually. They did really, really well. You Then a frost came along and killed them all off. The trouble was they did start to flower, and you really would not want them flowering or, or producing beans if, you, beans if you're doing them for green manure. Graham Arnold, homemade garlic bread. Mm, yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Garlic bread. That's one of the ideas we could discuss next week indeed. Oh, I love garlic bread. And we had moussaka for dinner tonight, believe it or not. And we have a nice bit of garlic bread on the side as well, which we use some of my uh, my own garlic that I harvested. Uh, Digwell, send your order over to me, then I can pick the garlic up when I go this summer, says Stuart. There you go. That's an idea. <laughs> there you go. If that's Stuart know what garlic you want, and when he's there, he can see what he can do. Great stuff. Stuart, have you done any sales this week? And if so, how much did you make in sales this week? I'd love to know a bit more because we were all impressed with what you did last week. Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> Digwell says uh, to Graham, nom, 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 about the garlic bread. And uh, I agree, garlic bread is fantastic. Indeed, it is. It should be a staple, I think. It should be something that is in every freezer just for when you need it, or at least garlic butter. Uh, cheers, Stuart, to Digwell. So if anybody is after any particular type of garlic, let Stuart know for when he goes to the garlic farm and he see if he can get it. So, Stuart, I'm just sort of... Um, I was going to say a rude word there, but I was just sort of sharing your kind words out but uh it's an idea if you're going and anybody does want some good garlic there we go i i'm personally what i do with my get into this next week i personally try and save my biggest garlic bulb for that particular for to plant next year so yeah yeah as i said you'll i've got a video it probably come out either tomorrow or tuesday um, it's edited, it's uploaded, it just hasn't scheduled it as of yet, uh, of about garlic, or my first, my early, very early white garlic. Garlic bread with sun-dried tomatoes and great, oh, you're making me hungry again. I've had moussaka, I cannot possibly eat any more, but you never know, but you get hungry. 
Uh, only sold from the table this week about £75, which has taken us up to nearly £18,000. Wow. Wow. I mean, £75, that's still pretty good just from a table. Is this just a table outside your house? That's still nothing to be sniffed at. Nothing to be sniffed at. Back in, um, when was it? Back in January, I sowed some rhubarb seeds, part of the supporters club. And I ended up with quite a few rhubarb seedlings, which I've been potting up and potting up. And I'm planning on selling those. They're actually getting really big at the moment. So I'm hoping next Next year, they're going to be in a really big pot, and we're going to pop those out to try and sell to make a, uh, um, a bit of money for charity as well. But they're nice, big rhubarb plants at the moment, really nice and big. Andrew Noyce says, I get so upset to see garlic from China in our supermarkets when it is so easily grown and our green markets are full of it. I don't know where our garlic comes from in the UK anymore. I, th I don't think it necessarily, I could be wrong. I don't think it necessarily comes from China. Uh, Andrew is obviously in uh, Croatia. But I don't think it comes from, I could be wrong though. Um, I think a lot of ours comes from France and Spain. But we got to, could be growing it in the UK. I mean, I certainly every year do grow garlic. Uh, I see it as being a staple. Uh, Stuart says, yes, it's outside my house. It's slowing up a bit, so it's now a donation only, so bargains to be had in our village. Um, it's the joys of this time of year, isn't it? People aren't buying plants so much now because it's coming to the end of the season. And Graham is saying, I'm going to harvest my rhubarb after the show. Yeah, so much rhubarb this year. It's been great. Absolutely love the amount of rhubarb. I think we, we discussed the ideas for what to cook with rhubarb a few weeks ago, didn't we? So, yeah, we get plenty of rhubarb, which is absolutely delicious and very, very, very welcome. Right, guys, I'm going to ask you once again, please do give us a like, please do give us a thumbs up, and please do follow us, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live. Um, and we are nearly at the end of this week's show. So if you want to hear... Um, um, more. I've got Kate and Jenny on the podcast tomorrow at Gardeners World Live. Uh, so if you want to hear more about that, that will be out tomorrow night at some point. Tuesday morning, most people listen. Um, and next week, yep, what you do with your garlic harvests, and we're going to do a Florence Fennel grow along. So just quickly. Autumn time, we should do a show sharing recipes. I'm more than happy to do that. We can do that any time of year, really. Uh, Nicholas says, some of my garlic, which I harvested last year, is doing better in wood chip paths than those planted in beds. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I suspect because of the amount of moisture that is wrapped around it. Um, there we go. So... Hargrave Gas says, thanks for another great week. Not said much, but really enjoyed listening. See you all next time. Well, lovely to see you anyway. I I think the uh, water, rainwater harvesting and, and um, efficient watering has been a great chat. So, yeah, I think we're going to wrap this up now. You take care, guys. We'll be back again next Sunday at 6 where we will do it all again. And, yeah, garlic harvests for next week. Until then, please take care.